website stuff, SEO. I have a question. Yeah. Um, and I don't know um, if it's something that you're going to cover, but I always get hung up on having my, so I have my like website and then, so I have my email hosting provider, or I'm sorry, my website hosting, then I have my email hosting, and then I want to attach the freebie. And I just get like, so confused at like how that all works. Is there a good, I haven't found anything that kind of explains it in a way that my brain is like getting it. So I get confused <laughs> and I just don't do it. Right. I have my website, I have my email provider, and then I don't attach any kind of a freebie or a landing page because I'm like not understanding, like I get confused with the email, like where's, I don't know. It's all confusing to me. Yeah. Yeah. Very understandable. Do you have Squarespace? Yes. Oh, that's good. Cause it's very easy with Squarespace. <laughs> okay, good. Yes. That's what I, I have. That's good. I have a website. I just haven't, I need to kind of update the, mm -hmm. the content. Yeah. Definitely. That's good. You have Squarespace. That's all I use to build my websites and for my own coaching website too, just because it's very user-friendly and it has the hosting maintenance and security built in. So you don't have to go in and like um, fix it if it crashes or anything. Um, but yeah, you can definitely add an email sign up, um, okay. and you can also add like a, a freebie giveaway in exchange. Um, but there's a couple ways to do both and I'll, I'll actually make a note to show you guys that in here. Because I already have an email, so I can use that email that I already have within Squarespace or do they do email hosting too? Yeah, you can either hook up your, um, like if you have MailChimp, you could hook it up to Squarespace or okay. Squarespace has their own campaigns too. I have never used them though, so I'm not sure how good they are. So who do you? Um, I love Mailchimp okay. so much. Okay. I think it's just good to know. <laughs> easy and customizable, and you can schedule things, and the analytics is like really dialed in. Like even when I worked in like website design companies, we would use Mailchimp, and we would get our website clients onto Mailchimp. Um, so I'll I'll actually just throw these in the chat real quick. Okay. Um. MailChimp is, in my opinion, the best email list program. And the email list is really nice because like it's yours, it's your space, it's your people. It's never going to go away. Like social media has algorithms and can shift. So I think email is really good. Okay. Squarespace is, in my opinion, the best website builder. WordPress is pretty great, but it is extremely complicated. I thought I, it was so much easier to Squarespace. Like I was so yeah. frustrated. I was like, I'm not doing this. And then I, somebody told me recommended Squarespace. I was like, oh, it was so easy. <laughs> <laughs> like this is a breath of fresh air. Because, yeah, it WordPress. was probably good that I started with WordPress because I was like, Squarespace is just a piece of cake after that. <laughs> yeah. Totally. I'm glad you like that. I'm glad you like that. Thank you. Um, yeah, of course. Hi, guys. Um, so I'll put these in here one more time. MailChimp is my favorite email list program, and it goes into Squarespace pretty seamlessly. And then um, Deb, worst case, if I don't have time to get to the freebie and the email yeah. sign up, which I'm sure I will, or if like I like forget. Um, I'll record like a little short video and send it to Meg for you guys to have Perfect. so that you can see how to do it. Thank you. Yeah. Cause that's where I get really, like, I have all the different parts and I just don't know how to, have, how to connect them all. If that makes mm -hmm. sense to make it work. That's what I wanted clarity on. Totally. Yeah. We can, we can go over that, but that's no, right now. And then let's see, so MailChimp for email, Squarespace for website, Google domains is the best for domain names. Um, okay. It's very cheap. It's usually like $12 a year and it's very easy to use. 
Um, and you can always switch from your other domain provider if you want to, you don't have to, if you feel confident with your domain provider, you don't have to switch it. Um, but Google Domains is incredible. Um, I'm gonna read Shana's comment. Hi, Shana. Shana, Shana, how do you say your name? I feel like I'm saying it wrong. Okay, maybe she's, she's looking at work, so she's. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> That's so cool. She's in Nampa. That's like 20 minutes from me. She says, I use WordPress. Do you know the price of Squarespace? Yes. Squarespace, I'll put it in here, is 33 per dollar. 30. Wow, words. <laughs> $33 per month for Squarespace. Or you can buy um, a year at a time and get. 20% off, I believe. Yeah. Yeah. So, but Shana, up to you. Totally. If you feel good with WordPress, you could, you could stay with that if you want to. Um, another resource I'm going to put in here real quick, or if you guys are taking notes, that's great too, is Marketing Made Simple book by Donald Miller. He's going to, teach you how to like wireframe your homepage, which is very, very helpful. He created the story brand, which is a lot of what mm -hmm. um, us coaches use and entrepreneurs use. He's one of the best marketers in the world. And so I would highly recommend the Marketing Made Simple book um, because it'll go over the homepage wireframe that I'll uh, try to show you briefly. And just keep in mind, guys too that the home page is the most important page of your entire website you want it to be very long um you want like lots of words at least um 300 i'm gonna put this in the chat as well and if that freaks you out <laughs> don't let it because the marketing made simple book is going to show you how to basically say everything you need to say in your long home page in like a summarized clean organized skimmable way which ultimately is what keeps people reading down the page and we want them to read to the bottom of the page and stay on the page as long as possible so i would highly recommend that book i don't think it's very expensive and it's so good he also goes over how to create a very successful lead magnet which is just a freebie like deb was mentioning like it could be an e-guide um and it, it could be like an informational e-guide like 10 ways to do xyz or how to xyz but um i won't dig into that too much because i'll let you read the book it's very good so yeah, just going over a couple of quick resources. MailChimp, I personally love for email. Squarespace is the website builder. It's so easy to use and the SEO is easy to implement. Google Domains is very inexpensive and um, very easy to use as well. And you can get like your professional email. You could get like um, sydney at resourcequeen.us if your domain is resourcequeen.us that's what mine is then you can get a professional email and then if you like to try uh, google meet it comes with that google workspace subscription which i believe is only six dollars a month and i love google meet i like zoom too but i just i fell in love with google meet because um you can do like invites on the calendar every week. You can attach like Google Doc notes if you take notes for your coaching clients. Um, you can invite other people. There's no attendee limit. There's no time limit and it doesn't cost you anything extra. Um, so I'm gonna check the comments real quick. Shana says that's cheaper. I also have Bluehost, it's over 400 a year. Yikes, that's expensive. <laughs> Deb says just bought the book on Amazon, eleven twenty three with tax. That's pretty cheap. I can't believe how cheap that book is with all the information it gives. <laughs> Crazy. I have a question as well, because I used um, Canva to just do a mock-up of my website, and then I realized you can publish your website directly from um, Canva. And I was curious about doing that, whether that would affect SEO, though, or whether it's better for me to build under like Squarespace or something. I've been using Bluehost, but I think it might be better to migrate over to Squarespace. 
Yeah, I would say um, Canva would be great like as a landing page, like temporarily. Um, but I would switch to Squarespace just whenever you can so that you could get the SEO going because I'm not sure if you could put much SEO onto the Canvas site, mainly just because it's so new. Like when new things come out, Google like takes some time to, to emotionally process. I'm just kidding. <laughs> Google takes time to be like, oh, there's something new. Okay, like I need to start sending people here. Um, so I would say Canva would be great as like a landing, a landing thing. Um, while you build a website but I mean also you don't feel your domain and everything so that's why I was curious maybe okay maybe I'll research it yeah yeah totally I would um I would think that the SEO does much better on the Squarespace and the WordPress um but up to you too totally like when you switch it over um because yeah since Canva is so new Google's not going to give it a ton of traction yet. Um, kind of like even though Wix has been around for a while, like Wix sites are like infamous for not ranking very well. Like it's just very strange. And I, I don't think Google knows enough about the Canva stuff. And then I'm not sure. Yeah, like where's the spot to put in the, the meta descriptions and meta titles, which I'll, I'll show you guys later too. Um, so Sarah, yeah, I would say just probably just switch when you can and when you feel like it. But again, if you have like a lot of people and you're doing a lot of networking events and you have a good amount of followers and you're already getting people like directly to your page, like not necessary to rush it either just to make the switch. Does that answer your question? Yeah, I think we'll research it a little bit, but like you're saying, if for Wix and stuff, whatever it's interfering with the SEO, then probably better to go with the knowns. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And and it depending on where you live and how your competition is, like you guys will see results very quickly with the Squarespace SEO. Like it, it, they say it takes two to six months to like really get moving, but I saw results within a few weeks of doing it. And it was very exciting. Like my website analytics and my Google My Business profile were getting way more views. Um, so that's exciting. You guys will see results quickly if you just really are willing to, to take this and run with it. Um, and if worst case, you don't want to do it, I will be here. I love doing it for people, especially coaches. <laughs> I'm going to check the comments real quick. Carrie says, I love the idea of starting with the landing page. Yeah, you could totally do that. Uh, you could even do that on Canva or you could do that in Squarespace as well. Just like start simple. If this overwhelms you, just start simple, start small. You no one need to go Canva? crazy. I didn't know that. Yeah, you can make just like a, a simple website. I've never done it though. I don't know what it's like, but there, I don't think you'd be able to do SEO, but I'm not sure because I haven't used it um I'll look into it yeah but for now just something to like get it up um besides yeah. just like a landing page like you could totally do a little something on there I'm not sure how much it costs and if it'd be worth it to do that and then like switch to Squarespace but yeah if that speaks to you and it's simple and easy like explore that I'm not sure how the layouts work but the layout I'll show you you might be able to do on there but again the SEO um on the canvas stuff I'm not sure about that either Okay. And then, yeah, totally. Are you going to go over Google business today? Yeah, I can do that, Deb, if you'd like to. Okay, Mom, as you're already talking about it, so I missed it. How much do you charge for it? Yeah, Deb, if you want to send me a message directly in the chat, um, and then I would be happy to answer that question, whether you're talking about a website or the or the Google My Business, um, feel free to do that. Demetria says, I love Kajabi. Any thoughts other than expensive? I know it is a lot. I didn't want to change down the line when I scale. Yeah, great question. I have not used that, um, but I can tell you for the SEO purposes and the online visibility, Squarespace and WordPress are the absolute best. I personally would not use anything else. Um, WordPress is just very complicated. And there's 
sometimes coding involved and I just, my brain does not like it. <laughs> um, so yeah, Squarespace is definitely recommended. And then WordPress would be second if you're, if you're techie or like willing to learn all the things. So Sarah says, here is my website that I made on Canva if anyone is curious. Oh yeah, I would love to see this. Wow, this is cute, Sarah. Looks very clean, I like it. Thanks for sharing that. <clears throat> okay, I know I've done a lot of talking. If anyone have more questions, you can put in the chat or you can come on camera. No questions? Really Sarah, cute. is that something? Oh, go ahead, go ahead. <laughs> I did. Do you have a like a special like I have a subscription with Canva and I love it. It's so easy. Does that come with your subscription? Yeah. And you can even like put your personalized domain. I I'm gonna research. Right, Sydney's not familiar with it. So, but anyway, I think she's right in the fact that. Um, well, first of all, anyway, it's her expertise, <laughs> right? But <laughs> Wix websites don't tend to perform as much. It's likely that Canva as well might have some stuff, but it does have a box for meta description. So I would be curious to see if I'm going to take some of what she says today and test it out. But um, you can put your own personalized domain too. I haven't had time to like link it up and everything, but you don't mm -hmm. have to have like a canva.canva something like mine is currently. I'm going to switch that over, but yeah, it's included. You don't have to pay extra if you have a oh. subscription. Gosh, I did not know this. Thank you so much. It's so customizable and simple if you're looking for like a, a like thing that you could really customize. Super, super easy. Canva. <laughs> okay, done. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's there's so many um, cool things out there these days if you guys like aren't ready yet to dive into a full like SEO Squarespace site, you could totally do something simple and um, like, a, like a landing page in the meantime, totally. Okay, any other questions ladies before we kind of get started on the teaching and I'll leave space for questions after too if you, if you see, if you have questions that come up. Okay, perfect. I will get started. Um, Sarah, it's not letting me share. It says host disabled participant screen sharing. Do you think? I think I just need permission from you. Maybe. Yeah, I just gave you the okay. Oh, sweet. Okay, desktop, share. Okay, perfect. Can you guys see this? Okay, great. Um, so this is my checklist that I have for today. And if you guys want to, um, let's see, take a picture of it or jot it down real quick. Um, these are just like, there's so much to SEO, but these are the things that are really important. And I'll, I'll read them out loud too. It, like I said, if you want to take a picture or take some notes, um, this is the whole outline right here. And I don't know if you guys use Google Docs with like these little like check bar, check, check box things. Uh, it's very satisfying to go through and check these off and just helps you stay organized with your to-dos. So we're gonna go over setting up Squarespace and the subscription plan. And then since some of us are haven't built maybe haven't built websites before, we're just gonna choose a layout and edit from there. And then we're gonna go over a domain name, 
the best website to check domain name availability and Google domains, how to connect it to your website. And then we're going to go over the layout of the site, um, how to kind of design the very first part, because as soon as you land on a website, just the part that you see before you scroll down is, is extremely important. We have about 30 seconds to catch somebody right when they land on that first part before they even scroll. So there's a spot where we want to put the buttons. There's a type of image we want to put. There's certain words in the heading one. So I'll go over all of that. And also the keyword and then which is what you're trying to rank for. It could be a life coach or business coach. I would go generic with this. Like if you are a relationship coach, um, I would personally put life coach if you're trying to rank in your city because then they could, they could be searching for that and then they could go to your site and then see like, oh, she does relationship coaching or she does life coaching and relationship coaching or if you're like a self-care coach or something else um i would highly recommend just putting life coach or business coach just for the seo purposes and you could always use um the words on the home page to try to get traction for relationship coach or self-care coach through like blogs or youtube videos or um other pages Okay, layout. We went over the layout. The Marketing Made Simple book by Donald Miller. We already talked about that. It's very, very good. And then we're going to talk about back and front end SEO in a really easy, simple way. Um, I'll show you what a meta title and a meta description is. Those are very, very important. And they also have character limits on them. So you want to have everything you want to say within that so that it's not cutting it off on Google. And I'll show you examples of these too. And then we'll talk about image SEO, uh, two tricks to do with all your images to help you rank because Google crawls through your website on the front end where people can see and the back end. So like even your domain name, even your image names are going to want to have SEO in them. It's gonna help so much drive more traffic. And then we'll go into on-page SEO and SEO content, how many times to mention your keyword on the home page, a website to figure out what people are Googling, and then um, some blog post ideas, um, how to optimize your blog posts for SEO. And then I'll, I'll try to go over the email signup and the freebie giveaway. If you have like a freebie to give away, um, such as like an e-guide or a guided meditation or anything, it's really nice to give that away in exchange for email because it builds those leads. Okay, does anyone have any um, questions before we start? I'm trying to see, how can I see the chat box when I'm sharing my screen? Oh boy. Okay, I can't see the chat back. So feel free guys to seriously just interrupt me. If you have a question, just like jump in. I totally don't mind at all. So real quick, I'll just touch on the Google My Business. Um, I know Meg said you guys already have done this. Um, so I'll just go over it really briefly. So what you wanna do with your Google My Business is include your keyword in it, which might be life coach or business coach. Um, so for example, if somebody is in Boise and they're searching for a life coach in Boise, you want to come up first. This is me. Um, I did a lot of work to get here. <laughs> um, so say your business name like mine is resource queen with the title of your google my business you want to put life coach or life coaching in there or business coach business coaching in the title like even if it's not in your domain name it's not in your business name um, we want to put this keyword literally everywhere that we can and then make sure too that your google my business has a link to your website and if you want to put your phone number, you can. And then this category right here, you want to select um, life coach or business coach. And when you create a Google My Business, it will ask you what category you want to select for it. 
Um, and then if you have questions about that, you can always Google um, how to choose a category for Google My Business Profile or complete list for 2022. This is helpful as well because it's going to show you, hopefully, all of the possible categories that Google My Business has. So let's see. Here we go. Here's the complete Google My Business category list for 2022. So there's all these options. So if we scroll down to check out Life Coach, wow. <laughs> so many. Oh, look, they're doing a freebie giveaway for email signups. Genius. <laughs> So can I just ask, um, if you're a weight loss coach, like I'm a weight loss coach, are they going to Google weight loss coach or life coach? Do you think? Mm, I would, I would do some research on that. It might okay. be best to do like fitness coach or personal trainer. Okay. Cause yeah, great question. It you is wanna... mindset, but I wonder if they would be Googling which one they would be Googling if they want to lose weight. I don't know. Yeah, I would go for like the most generic thing people are searching for and make sure they connect to you. Okay. So let's see. Yeah, like maybe fitness, fitness coach or fitness trainer. Fitness center, fitness equipment. No or maybe health. I don't know. I'll look. Mm -hmm. I Health coach, that would be a great one. Health consultant. Yeah, that's and it, yeah, you might just play around with the Google My Business too. Okay. And like it can, you can type in the words and see what comes up. But definitely, yeah, that's a great question. If health consultant is the only thing that comes up, I would go with that one. Just for your Google My Business. For the website, yeah. you can totally do health coach because people Google that for sure. Okay, thank you. Yeah, totally. And then the other piece I wanted to mention too is um, if your website, even if your website isn't ranking, um, because coaching is a very competitive industry right now, <laughs> your Google My Business can rank on page one and it can rank at the top. So I would get as many reviews from clients as you can and still asking my clients to leave me a Google review that I've worked with in the past a year later. And just, you're not annoying. Just keep reminding them. A lot of them, like, they're just like, oh, life got busy. I forgot. I'm sorry. Like, it really, really helps your business. I started emailing my past clients every single week until they left me a review. And I was like, hey, I know I'm being annoying, but this would help me so much. And I would also... If it took them a few weeks, I would attach like one of my e-guides, like a free copy and be like, here's a treat for you. Plus, will you please leave me a Google review? Um, so I would get as many of those as you as you possibly can. Yes, do you have a question? Yes. Um, if you don't have a website or a landing page yet, should you still do this or wait until you have one? Yeah, you could definitely still do it. Okay. Definitely. Great question. Thank you. And then yeah, you could put your, your phone number on here. I'm not sure if you can put email or not, because I've never put that, but you can definitely put your phone number on there and they could get a hold of you that way. So we went over words, categories, reviews. Does anyone else have any questions about the Google My Business? You're welcome to come on camera and ask. The very first step where they ask your business name, that's where you're suggesting that we put the SEO. We don't actually put the name of our business. Yeah, I would put both, Sarah. I would put um, your business name and then at the end, like life coach or life coaching or business coach or business coaching. It might seem like long and maybe redundant, but it really does work. So if yours, I wasn't sure what the name from coach to CEO, right? Yeah, coach to CEO. 
Yeah, you could put um, coach to CEO life coaching or coach to CEO business coaching. And, and this would just be your Google My Business name, like no need to, to change it anywhere else, but just as many times as you can have the word life coach or business coach or health coach will be super, super helpful for ranking. So would you recommend like business coach for coaches? When I'm thinking of like what people might be Googling. You could, yeah. Actually, if you if you want to just work with the coaches, you could put that. Then you would have coach three times on your Google My Business name, which could serve you well. <laughs> yeah, great question. Any other questions? Okay, perfect. So now we'll go to a couple of the resources real quick. Um, Answer the Public is amazing. Um, I signed up for Neil Patel's email list too because he just gives you so many tricks. But basically you can come in here and type in a keyword, which is just one to two words. So say you were wanting to know what people Googled when it came to life coach, and hopefully this works because I've used it already my maximum times. <laughs> oh, it is going to work. Okay, perfect. And then it will give you exact questions people are searching, prepositions, comparisons. It will give you a list in alphabetical order, and then it will give you related things people are Googling. So first it gives you questions. Can a life coach be a therapist? Oh God, <laughs> I think we all know the answer to that one. Probably not unless you're a licensed therapist. Um, so like when to hire a life coach, what a life coach does, which life coach certification is best. Like um, these are gonna be mostly informative and frequently asked questions, but if you use them, they will drive more traffic to your site. You could take any of these um, and put them on your website as blog posts. You could also use them for YouTube videos, and then um, you could use them for Facebook and Instagram posts as well, but they're going to do better as blog posts and YouTube videos. How does life coaching work? Um, another option is when you put the frequently asked questions at the bottom of your homepage, you could put these there as well. And you could do YouTube videos and or blog posts. Um, but having some of these on your website is really, really good because some people might have never worked with a coach before coming to you. And also Google is going to crawl your site and see like, oh, she's mentioning the word life coach a hundred times. Like I should connect this searcher to her because they're searching for a life coach. And then it also gives you prepositions. And some of these are going to be weird and not make sense. So just ignore those ones. <laughs> life coach does what? Like. I maybe wouldn't use that one. <laughs> um, life coach for teenager near me. Like these are exactly things people are Googling. So like this is gold. Like take these and run with them. You can hit this download button right here at the top right corner and download all of this stuff into a document and, and save it. So that's Answer the Public. It's really a great resource. Does anyone have questions on this? What was the, what was the question you asked or what was the, what did you put in that search key again for this question? Yeah, I just typed in life coach. Oh, okay, cool. Yeah. Yeah. A keyword, you want to keep it one to two words. So like life coach, health coach, business coach. Um, you could also search other things too, but I believe this gives you a limit before it'll charge you. Um, so you could, you could type in weight loss, you could type in mindset. Um, you could type in anything. I, I don't pay for it because I have a pretty sophisticated SEO program that I pay a lot for. But if this is like a, at a good price point, like 20 bucks a month, like it's going to be worth it for sure because you're going to get to see into the minds of people that are searching for you or searching for coaches. 
So I know you're using the term general life coach here, but like, um, like Deb's a weight loss coach and I'm a binge eating coach. Um, Mm -hmm. and mine's like pretty specific. So do you think it'd be helpful for like me to do binge eating and see what comes up around that or more of the life coach side? Yeah. If, if that's your specialty, um, and you want to get optimized content, I would do the, the binge eating, the binge eating okay, <laughs> or weight loss. Um, cause then you'll get to see like what people are Googling. And so what, for example, one of my clients, um, she's like a women's empowerment coach in Fresno and building her site right now, but I'm, I'm, putting the word life coach on her site at least 30 times, but then that you can also add something else into and layer it. I'm putting the word empowerment and empath and HSP on there as much as I can too. And some of that will rely on the blog posts as well. Like if you feel like making blogs or want to like hire um, me or somebody else to write blogs for you, like and I'll show you, you can kind of put a spot on the site that like is like a summary of the blogs. Like here's like, you know, eight or 12 of my recommended blog posts. It'll just show you the title of the blog post and then a little snippet. And that's a good way to get more people on your site. So you could have like a bunch of binge eating like blog articles, like at the bottom of your homepage where they could click in to like read the whole blog. Um, so you could definitely try to get yourself ranked for like health coach or something, and then put the words binge eating on your site Mm -hmm. as much as possible. I would say any keyword you use, try to put on your site at least 30 times. Um, and when I first heard that, I was like, what the fuck? It really does get easier though. Like if you're passionate and knowledgeable about your topic, like you'll be able to, to put it on there at least 30 times. I think mine was 60 at one point and I need to probably update that. Um, does that answer your question, Amber? Yeah, thank okay, you. Good. Totally. Any other questions, lady? Okay, perfect. Another resource I'll show you real quick is called domainr.com. If you're checking for a domain name's availability, I would search here and nowhere else because this website keeps your domain search private, where if you search anywhere else to check a domain name availability, it's going to tell other websites that that name was searched and it's going to increase the price of the domain. So domainer domain r.com is really really good if you're like oh is um health coach seattle.com taken and then it'll show you taken health coach seattle.org is available and it'll show you how, who you can buy it through and again i would highly recommend google domains it's just the best and easy and cheap um And a quick note about domain names. You guys can totally have your original business name, like from coachceo.com or like mine is resourcequeen.us. And I did that because resourcequeen.com was five grand. I was like, I just don't feel like spending five grand on a domain name right now, maybe later. (laughs) Um, But if you can grab... um, health coach your city.com that is incredible you should grab that because you can have multiple domains going to your website and i'll show you how to do that in squarespace um that will massively help your seo i have lifecoachboise.com i don't know how that was available to be honest <laughs> but um that will also help your seo a lot because the the, the links are very important Google pays attention to those links. And again, having your keyword, your one to two words and your city name is gonna be really helpful for the SEO. Does anyone have questions about domain names? I know this isn't necessarily sexy stuff, but I promise you like it will help your business grow. But I wanna check in any questions about domain names? Yes. So you have multiple, but you're not using all of them? 
I yeah, you could. That. Yeah, good question. So you're using both um, to drive traffic to your website, but say, for example, um, your main domain name might be like lifecoachboise.com because that has the SEO. So you would put that um, on your Google My Business profile since it's really important for that to be there. And then anywhere else, like on your business card, on your link tree, like on your Facebook bio, you could put your business name dot com um, if you prefer that. So if you have two domain names and they're both pointing to your site, you could give people either domain name lifecoachboise.com or mine is like resourcequeen.us and they both take you to the same place. But I would make your primary domain um, the one with like your title and your city.com for the SEO purposes. Great question. Thank you. Yeah, hold on. I'm so used to coaching. I'm not used to talking this much. This is so wild. <laughs> Any other questions, guys, on the sexy topic of domain names? <laughs> okay, feel free to interrupt me anytime if questions come up. Um, last quick tip I'll leave for you to take notes on around the domain name is I would not, uh, I wouldn't go over four words, maybe even three if you can, but you want it to be something like catchy, memorizable, like from coach to CEO.com is very catchy, memorizable, easy, like, so it's just a good thing to keep in mind. Um, three or four words max, something on the more simple side could be a business name. Okay, and then if something like .com is taken, .co is nice, or .us is another good one as well. Okay, let's go to the website. And I want to check in real quick. Sarah, do you guys do like a five-minute break or anything at the hour mark before we do a second hour, or how does Meg usually do it? Yeah, she usually does um, a break for us to kind of uh, apply some of the things. And but, so we could do a little break, a little five minute break if you have. Yeah, sure. Like on the hour. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm going to set a timer for that again. Okay. One more question. This might be redundant. But in the domain thing that you were talking about, and you said you could do like health coach Queen Creek, well, that would be mine. Um, yeah. Would weight loss coach be too many words? Or would you? No. Okay. No, I don't think so. I think three, two or three words in the and domain name is perfect. Yeah. Okay. Weight loss coach Queen Creek. Queen Creek is my city. I don't think that's bad, honestly. I don't think that's bad. Because I like what? looked that up and there's weight loss coach queen creek .com available. Yeah. Yeah. Weight loss coach. Is Crane Creek one word or two? Crane Creek is two. Two. It I is mean, a I little can, long, but I, can I do Gilbert, which is like a bordering city. I don't know if that matters. Yeah, I would say, I would say you could do that. Weight loss coach, it's a little bit long, but like if people are Googling weight loss and they're in that city, then it's going to help with the SEO. But another thing too, is if you're in like a suburb or like a smaller city, you could totally put the biggest city near you yeah, okay. since more people will be there Googling. Perfect. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Any other questions? Yeah, I have a question. Like if I want to list my Google My Business under a not a, another city that I'm not in, is that a problem or possible? No, no, not at all. I would say like the bigger city you can go for, the better because there's more traffic, there's more searches. And then 
If you're seeing clients remotely, then you could see them anywhere. Or even if, like, it might be a small chance that someone's like wanting to see you in person and they're in that city, but you could handle that however you want to. But I don't think that's bad at all. And let's say it's like right now I'm based in Mexico, but there's like the phone number thing. Do we have to put a phone number? And if so, I imagine it would probably need to be an American phone number. Yeah, for the Google My Business, you don't have to put your phone number. You could just put your website. Okay. Yeah. That's cool. You're in Mexico. I love that. I Where is Mexico? Playa del Carmen. Sorry, Carrie. What no, that's okay. There? I was actually curious too. Oh, you were? <laughs> that is so cool. I love that. Mexico, what? <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to come down to Costa Rica to hang out. <laughs> I was actually wondering the same thing because I am based out of Raleigh, but I'm from upstate New York. So a lot of like my friends and family, you know, like have shared. So I'm, I love to be remote. Like I love to be able to help so many different people. I, and even any of Sarah's friends from Costa Rica or Mexico, they need any, um, did you say Costa Rica? I'm going there. Yeah. Oh, you're going there. Oh, cool. So that that's what I think is really cool. So when you like, what would you put in? Like, should I put in Raleigh or should I put in something more general or nothing at all? Like remote? Mm, I would put um, where you live. I would put the city where you live. Okay. Um, And if you're on like yeah, say you're outside of Raleigh in like a smaller city, I would put Raleigh for sure. And then you could always say on your site, like I'll show you guys my site. You could say like serving Raleigh and remotely or serving Raleigh and online. You could totally say that so that. Okay. Because like when I was in Ecuador for two months traveling, I put, I just left that on there, like serving Boise and remotely. And then I put on there, like currently traveling South America. Um. And so then they know like, oh, cool. She's not like just in person or just online. She does both. But for okay. the SEO, yeah, I would put the city you're in or like the biggest city that's like pretty close to you. And you guys too can totally take something like this, like life coach rally um, or something and search it on a web page and see like what your competition is. Like say we were searching for a life coach in Las Vegas. You can go and see exactly who's ranking number one, number two, number three. You could see how many reviews they have. You want to get more reviews than everybody else on the Google My Business. The reviews are so important. Um, and you could see kind of like the competition on the Google My Business. Um, but yeah, something like coaching sometimes it's it's going to be really tough to get the website on page one but the google my business can totally rank for you which is literally just as good <laughs> as your website being on page one because so many people see it so is there a limit to how many domains you recommend we get like could we get like 10 or is there like no point <laughs> I did have a client buy like seven before, but I don't know how much of a difference it makes. I would say the business, your business name one, and then one for the SEO with your city is perfect. Got it. Um, but you could, you could do that just to like play around and experiment and see what happens. But yeah, I'm not sure on that one, but that's a good question. I actually have weight loss phoenix.coach available and weight loss coach phoenix.com is there a better one between the two can you say those one more time yeah so phoenix is the capital so i typed that one in and it's yeah. weight loss phoenix dot coach or weight loss coach phoenix.com hmm. i'll show you a trick to find that out actually so what you guys can do is um to see what is has more results you could google weight loss coach is it o e <laughs> yeah oh it is oh phoenix yeah yeah 
I always forget that. Thank you. <laughs> so you could Google, uh, wait, lost coach Phoenix. So the, yeah, the one is weightlossphoenix.coach and the other mm -hmm. weightlosscoachphoenix.com. I think weightlosscoachphoenix.com okay. would serve you better for sure. Just because .com is a very common end to a domain name. Okay. Um, whereas dot coach might be a little newer. Yeah, I would I would definitely do the dot com one if I were you. And then if you guys ever want to check like um, what to maybe put your domain name as, um, you could Google something like weight loss coach Phoenix and see this bar up here how many results there are. You always want to pick the one that has the most. This has five million results. Whereas let's see about fitness coach phoenix so this one has 12 billion is that right 5 billion versus 12 billion so if i was like for example doing somebody's site i would want to get them ranked for fitness coach because there's 7 billion more search results for that and when there's more search results for something that means there's more searches for it people are searching for for example potentially fitness coach more than weight loss coach but like don't get too caught up in these details like if you have the weight loss stuff set up and you're doing the seo like that can totally work too this is just something that is just that extra trick you could do to see what people are are googling but you can't go wrong fitnesscoachphoenix.com weightlosscoachphoenix.com like those are really good keywords those are really good domain names um and then always check the Google categories too. Like these are people are all listed as personal trainers and they have tons of reviews. And if you're not a personal trainer, um, you might want to choose something different. I mean, there's going to be the weight loss service. Um, not sure what the other categories might be, but just do some research and look at the categories and um, play around with that. So what happens if we just type that? I have a question. Some of yeah. like as they're listed, like you said, as they're ranked, like one, two, and three. Some of them, like I just looked for rally personal stylist, and like the second one, I think like they all have five stars. And I feel like the one that's ranked first has less reviews. And I was just interested in why that may be. Yeah. Can you tell me what you searched for one more time? Yes. Um Wait, what did I do? Hang on. <laughs> I, just, <laughs> let me do it. I did Raleigh personal stylist. Yeah, like the second one. Oh, see, that's so funny. On mine, Claire Roberts is listed as number one and she is 18, but on yours, it's a, you know what I mean? It's mm. like the one and two are flip-flop for me. Interesting. Okay. Yeah, this isn't an ad either. But it so, should it should be like that, right? I assume. Yeah, I mean, the one who has more reviews should be first, but I think it can depend on their websites. So, for example, if you guys have a Mac, you can hit Command F, and it'll give you this search bar. I'm not sure what it is for Windows. I'm sorry, but you can Google like um, shortcut search for Windows. But for Mac, it's Command F, and you could type in say the word stylist and see how many times it's mentioned it's only mentioned one time that is literally very bad SEO um so you said she's ranked one and then let's see about this one this pop-up right when you land on the website is also a turn off don't make your pop-up come up right when you land on the website <laughs> make sure like people have some time to look at your stuff so she has the word styling 14. So I wonder why she's probably ranking a little bit higher, at least for me, which is interesting. She has the word style 11. Yeah, that's interesting. So they're, maybe why they're flip-flopping is because their keywords are mentioned almost the same amount of times. Like this woman mentions the word S-T-Y-L, like style or styling 14, and the other one was only 11. So that could be why. 
if one of them mentioned it like 30 or 40, one of them would probably always rank first because Google is like, it's a words game. Google is always like, oh, what words is she using? Does that make sense? Yeah, that's crazy. It's very interesting. I, that's cool. Oh, I'm glad you like it. SEO is kind of fun. It's like a puzzle. I don't know how many times. Oh boy. <laughs> yeah, and, and you could, for example, you could search different um, versions of a word. You could search style, you could search styling, you could search stylist. But if you want um, people to be searching for something to buy, I would put stylist or coach instead of coaching or weight loss consultant instead of weight loss consulting. But you can always add those too as well you could have the words life coaching on your website um but if you if you add life coaching it's going to be more people searching for information but if you put life coach it's going to be more people searching to buy something to hire somebody for service if that makes sense okay yeah any other questions before we take a little five minute break Yeah, quick question. Um, if I put my um, current website, am I able to change that later? Yeah, if you if you like do something with the Google My Business and change it later, or yeah, yeah, you can edit the Google My Business profile. Um, I'm not sure if you can change. I'm sure you can change the category. I've just never done it. But yeah, you can you could update it for sure. Like I I changed the title of mine just a few weeks ago. Okay, perfect. Yeah, yeah, you can change the website name or um, take the website off or put the phone number on or take it off or change it. It should all be editable. 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 That is the weirdest word. Any other questions? We've gone over a lot. Hopefully our brains aren't mush. Okay, cool. I'll give you guys um, just a five minute break. Is that okay, Sarah? Like you guys wanna just go chill or get some water or something, go to the bathroom and then I'll come back on at seven after. Perfect. Let's do that. And that gives people a little bit of time to maybe implement building out their Google My Business page. Um, and then we can dive back in. Yeah. Thank you. Seven.
Sydney, can I ask a question? Yeah. I'm looking on uh, domainr.com. So I'm in a small city, Cupertino, but it's near San Jose. And lifecoachsanjose.com is taking, taken. Mm -hmm. .co is available and .us is available. Mm -hmm. um, do you think I should take one of those or take cupertino.com? Hmm. I would check if so life coach San Jose is taken, right? Dot com, yes, but dot co is available and dot us is available. Okay, let's see if San Jose Life Coach.com is available. Mm, I if I were you I would do dot co because it's almost exactly the one that's taken it's okay. close enough. and then like, do it on google what was it googled um Google my business. No, Google domains. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Google domains is the best. So I somehow have a Google business. I got, I, I did a Gmail account and it, I said, oh, I'm a business and it gave me one, but I don't, I'm so not tech savvy. I don't remember how to get back there. <laughs> I didn't oh, yeah. finish setting it up because I didn't know what to do. So do I just Google, how do I find mine? <laughs> so, <that's me. laughs> Am I frozen or is she? I think she is. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> This is the stuff I want someone to do for me. I don't like any of this stuff. I just want to coach. <laughs> it's good to know all of this stuff, like to at least have an aerial view of it because it makes it, it facilitates being able to, when you're hiring, evaluate. It's definitely one of the things that I've found in my experience when I've like thrown money at a problem because I didn't want to deal with it in my business, mm -hmm. then I wasn't able to keep the other person accountable and it mm -hmm. ends up being a money drain. So you don't need to become an expert in any of this stuff, but I think Megan would probably say the same thing on that it is good to understand what's happening, right? As a CEO, if you're, these are your employees when you're hiring out and it's important to know how to manage them. That makes sense. Thank you, Sarah. <laughs> Can you guys hear me? Yes. <laughs> Sorry, the Wi-Fi just randomly dropped out. <laughs> oh my goodness. But it's back now. I'm gonna grab my laptop charger real quick. So I have a question. Um I think I got it right on Google My Business. That's where she wants us to put in like Antimetria McVay coaching is the name of my business, but title of the business on Google My Business. We want to put in Timitri McVay Life Coaching. Perfect. Okay. Thanks. Yeah, that's perfect. Hmm. Okay, I'm going to share my screen. Did anybody else have questions before I continue? Okay. Interrupt me if you do anytime, literally. Um, so yeah, for editing, just Google my business profile. And then you should be able to, it, it should pop up right here. Like, Hey, this is your Google my business. Um, or you could just go to the first link and hit manage now. 
and then it might make you log in, but it might not. And then you should be able to edit it from there. And same with Google domains. If you're like, I need to get into my Google domains. I don't know how. Just go to the um, Google domains website. And if you're logged in, then you should be able to click my domains and then manage it from there. Okay, so um, we're gonna go over just how to set up a basic website. And because I'm logged in, it's not going to let me. Maybe it will now. So you're just gonna go to squarespace.com and then click get started. You don't have to do this now though. I'm just going over it briefly. And since I already have some websites, I don't, I'm not able to show you from the back end, but you just click get started and then it'll ask you <clears throat> to pick a layout. So if you're not like experienced with websites, the layouts are amazing. Um, Clarkson is one of my favorites. It's just so easy. And so it'll bring you to this page and it'll show you popular designs. And then if you just scroll down, um, I chose one that has the marketing wireframe layout already. Like this one kind of has it um, because it has a big hero image and a big title. And then underneath that title, it has a paragraph and a button. And I'll show you that layout when I briefly build this other one. So I would start with Clarkson. So start with Clarkson, just because it has a little bit of the layout already. It'll be a lot easier. <clears throat> and then here you'll put the title of your um, website. So you could put uh, just your business name, let's say. I'll just put mine. I can't think of anything new at the moment. Okay, and I might have to move this over. Here we go. There we go. And then continue. And then it'll talk about editing pages, how to create pages, <clears throat> and then get started. And so I'm going to try to figure out, oh, that's way better. Okay, there we go. <laughs> like, where do I put you guys so that it's not in my way? Okay, and then, so this is a Squarespace. It's so easy and yeah, you will get used to it over time as you play around with it. And there's tons of YouTube videos as well. But we're just going to focus briefly on the home page. You're just going to click edit. And then this has the perfect layout already. Just like I said, that first thing that you see before you scroll is everything. Um, so what I would do is click edit section and you're just going to increase the row count on this hero image until it covers the whole first part of the page. That's all you have to do in the beginning. And then, um, Editing the text and the buttons is really easy. Um, you can just click in here and you wanna make sure this is heading one because Google is going to want to see your keyword in your heading one. So let's say um, life coach or teens serving Boise, Idaho, and remotely. And we're gonna make this heading one. You could always drag it over if you want to, but just remember like all the text on your website, you wanna to try to keep it left aligned because that's how the eye reads. And then for the button, you can just click on it and click edit. And then here you can type the words. Book a consult, <clears throat> and then you can put a link to book with you right here. And it, whenever you're adding links to your website that go to another place, I would always go to this settings icon and click open in a new window, because then at, if they're leaving your site and going to another page, they're still gonna have your website 
as another tab. And we always want that so that it increases the chances that they come back to your website and don't just click off and then forget about you. <laughs> and we're just gonna hit save. Okay, so that's all we've done so far. We just made this section a little bigger by increasing the row count to fit the page. And then we've put in the heading one and the button. Um, and then what you wanna do too, um, to add in like your tagline or like a summarized thing of, of who you serve, you're just gonna add a block, click text. I really hope this is, I'll check in with you guys after this to make sure. You're gonna just drag it right below here. Make sure it's paragraph one. Heading one and paragraph one is Google is gonna read the for the keywords in your heading one and then the keywords in the first paragraph one. Um, so you could say something like um, life coaching for at-risk teens. Hmm. Who want to read academically and learn how to feel safe again. It could be any type of um, tagline that you've chosen for your business. And then you could always match up the link. This is just click and drag. It's nice and easy. There's no coding necessary <laughs> um, unless you're doing complicated things. And then you're going to want to bring your button up a little bit and just give it a little bit of space in between because we want it to be like clean and easy to read. Um, and then this image is actually kind of perfect because this hero image, we want it to usually be um, a landscape image of, of either you, which is really helpful, and or it could be um, a stock image like this. But we want it to basically be an image of something that somebody wants to feel or wants to be like something that evokes an emotion. Like there's always like, you know, women at a computer smiling or laughing or somebody on the beach or like this image, it looks like people hiking in nature. So maybe this is like peaceful, serene, like they're getting outside, they're doing something healthy. So this is actually ironically is a great hero image for just the example I'm showing you. Um, so, so yeah, do you, I'm sorry. Do oh, you God. typically, like, I think like in my head, I assumed like, oh, I had brand fo branding photo shoots done. Do you think we really should like leverage the resources? Well, leverage the resources, you know, like that Squarespace is giving us, like you said, like if they have this photo, like we should use it. Is that what you're kind of saying? Um, I would say use your own photos as much as you can. That's a great okay. question because okay. the stock, um, Google will reward you with your SEO if you use your own images. Okay. But if you like don't have something or you just need a placeholder, you could totally use their stock images. Um, okay. You would just go to edit section background and then you could replace this and upload your own or you could replace it and browse stock images and it'll give you like tons of pictures. You can even search in here for something specific. Okay. And what do you mean like when they'll Google will reward you? What does that mean? Yeah. <laughs> Good question. Uh, Google likes it when you have original images. So it'll send more people to you. It'll increase the SEO if you have your own images. Okay. Yeah. Good question. Mm-hmm. So yeah, this um, <clears throat> this part is just everything. So it, it'll go over this in the Marketing Made Simple book too. A lot of this layout stuff, it'll go over. We always want a button in the top right, a button in the top left, a heading right here on the left, and then a subheading here on the left. Since the I reads down in a Z, <clears throat> this is like the perfect landing spot. So I'll show you guys mine real quick. <laughs> so this is mine. This is another way to do your layout. Like I had a really cute picture that I had my boyfriend take in Ecuador that I loved, but it wasn't landscape enough. 
So that's okay. You can always play around and change this. And I'll show you briefly how to do this layout instead. But we always want a button in the top right. Always want a button in the bottom left. Heading one with the keyword, your city. And then this can be your tagline. And even better if you mention your city again um, with your keyword again, which is right here. Like this, if you just have this, like you're doing great. <laughs> and then, um, yeah, any quick questions around just this very first part of the home page? Okay. Just a quick question. So I know for SEO, we want the your location. Does that, do you think that limits you? Because like my very first client was in Canada and I'm in Texas. So, I mean, I guess obviously I can still work with people wherever, but does that, having that on your page limit you in any way? Yeah, great question. Um, I don't think so because SEO is like a local thing. So it's just like another tool in your toolbox of marketing tactics to use to get more clients. So like this SEO will usually get you um, leads from people in your city or like around your city, but also like people could still find your website from other places. Like um, they could find it, I mean, randomly in a Google search, like the likelihood of them finding it in another city is pretty slim. But you know, if you have like a link tree or you have your website linked on your Facebook or on your business cards, or say you go to like networking events, like um, it doesn't limit you. It's just like another nice option to have. Like I get a lot of people reaching out to me from my website. It's just a really nice thing to have. And as you guys probably know, when people reach out to you and it's their idea, they're way more inclined to buy from you because they, it was like truly intrinsic. They're like, I'm searching for a life coach in this city. Um, does that answer your question? It does. Thank you. Yeah, totally. Yeah, you'll have you'll have many other ways, hopefully, of marketing that can definitely drive people to your stuff too. Mm. And um, you can check your Squarespace analytics as well. Because some people find me like from other countries. I don't know how, <laughs> but if you go to analytics and you go to traffic, let's go to the last 30 days. Actually, let's go to geography. So you can scroll down here from analytics geography and you could see like, okay, US. And then I started <laughs> coming up in Ecuador because I was there for two months. <laughs> so your VPN. Well, no, I'm not going to go into that. Where you are with your laptop matters as well. If you're in another place, like your, um, your Google is going to know where your laptop is. So you could always click the US. Of course, Idaho is the highest. This is just the last 30 days. People find me in Ohio, the second popular state. They find me in Oregon, Virginia, Utah, California, et cetera. You can always check that. Because people will find you from other places too. Um, and then you could see other countries that people are finding. Oh my God, this is so funny. I just had a connecting flight in Panama. That's so funny. I was only there for a few hours. Okay, anyway, that's hilarious. And you can see what other countries are checking you out and where in those countries are checking you out too. So um, you can definitely find some clients from some other places as well. I've had a couple of people reach out from other countries. Okay. Any questions about that? Okay, perfect. And then um, when you're done just editing this part, or even if you just want to save, I would just always save before you, you make more edits. <clears throat> And then I'll show you guys real quick how to link up a domain. You're just going to go to your settings, domains, and it's so easy. And then use a domain I own. 
and you're going to enter your domain, click next. It's going to pop up and you're going to hit connect. And then real quick, if it doesn't connect, I would go to your Google domains and you're going to want to unlock and then relock your domain. So you just go to Google domains, manage. Oh, let me remember how to do this. Okay, perfect. So registration settings. This takes two seconds. I promise it's easy. Scroll down to domain registration. It's always going to be locked. You're just going to unlock it very briefly. And then you're going to hook it up to your site. Wait a few minutes, and then when, when Squarespace says this is connected, you're going to come back and lock it right after. You don't want to leave this unlocked because other people could um, transfer your domain and take it from you, which would be very bad. <laughs> okay, and I'm going to double check that we are on track. So always choose the business plan in Squarespace. It's only 33 per month. And then I think it's only 26 a month. If you pay a year up front, you get like, I believe 20% off. Choosing the simple layout, we went over the Clarkson layout, which already has some of the things that we want. We went over domain name, connecting your domain, where to check for domain availability, how to use your business name. Um, and then if you guys want, you can always add another domain with this. It's very easy. It's the same exact thing. And then down here, it'll say, primary domain, secondary domain. And I would make your SEO one your primary, the one like lifecoachboise.com. And then a secondary could be resourcequeen.us. And, and people will always be able to, to type both of those in and get to your site either way. So don't, don't worry about that either. And then we went over layout. So the hero image, a landscape picture. Um, or you could build one like mine. I'll show you real quick. So this is just the duplicate option. Actually, we're going to add a new section instead. So add a section. This is how you add a section, and they already have some nice layouts here. This is pretty much the one that I chose because you can add an image of you here. You can put your heading one with your keyword and your city you can put your tagline with your keyword and your city and then a button again. Um, and since I, I've been doing websites for a while, so I kind of like moved things around. But if you guys just like don't want to like mess around too much with it, like just feel free to just like fill in these layouts and leave it as it is. That'll work totally fine. So we went over heading one, keyword and city, heading two, tagline, keyword and city again. We went over the buttons, the top right, the bottom left of this first page. And then I'll show you guys my website here in a minute. Less is more, make user friendly, over complicated and beautiful. Yeah, kind of like um, Sarah's site was perfect. It was nice and organized, like broken up, like skimmable, clean, like that's what you want. You guys don't have to do anything crazy. You really don't. Um, you can always hire a graphic designer later on to do fancy stuff, but like um, really just how user-friendly it is. Um, and if you follow that wireframe from the Marketing Made Simple book, that is going to be um, the best thing that you can do for your site. And so I'll go over mine just briefly. Um, so this is the first part that I have. And then for these links up here, I would say you always want to have the home, the about, the contact, and then services if you have a lot of services. If you, if you just have life coaching, you could just put life coaching and build out a page on life coaching or weight loss or binge eating. Like for example, my partner is a therapist and I'm going to build his website. He helps with depression. So I'm going to put um, a page for depression, a page for anxiety, but you could create like a drop down like this. So he, I, I'm for his, I'm going to put therapy or something like that, you know, depression, anxiety, teens, young adults. 
And when you build out one page for each service like that, that's another great opportunity to put more SEO. So say one of his pages is going to be about depression. I'm going to list the word depression at least 30 times on that page. And people might not even read it, but it's going to do well for the SEO. So if you guys have like a life coaching or health coaching business and you help people with binge eating, that could be a page. Um, weight loss could be a page. Um, mindset could be a page. Like, um, what else? That's all I can really think of for that. Um, and then you could put that those keywords on there at least 30 times, just do a bunch of writing, break up the paragraphs, like have people read it over and give feedback and stuff. Um, so yeah, home about contact services. And then of course, remind me real quick, the keywords, does the keywords have to be in your, um, domain for it, Google to reward you. So if I'm like weight loss mindset, life coaching, how do you decide which ones are the keywords again? Yeah, I would think about, um, <clears throat> what people are Googling. Okay. Um, so if I, I think they would be kind of like, I don't know if Megan's gone over this, but like you sell people what they want, such as weight loss, but then like you give them what they need, which might be like mindset right. could be a huge part of it. So I would just go with the basic things that people might be searching for, such as weight loss, because okay. they might not even realize like weight loss and mindset are like so intertwined. So the mindset you don't have to be as worried about putting 30 times as the weight loss. Totally. Perfect. Okay. Totally. You could even not put mindset on your website at all, but you know that that is an important component to your coaching. And then you just bring that into the coaching and then they'll realize like, oh, mindset is a huge component. <laughs> Great question. Any other questions? Okay. Um, so I'll, I'll go over my site real quick. Um, just to show you a layout I did just like the, the Donald Miller book, but I added a lot more stuff because I am an SEO psychopath and I wanted to rank. So <laughs> I'll show you mine. Um, these headlines are really easy to add. I'll show you real quick, but these headlines are awesome to break up the sections. This is an unusually long one. So I'll show you how to add one right here. So say um, this is your main section right here. It already kind of has a headline in here for you. You can go ahead and just delete one text. This is super easy, just drag and drop. You can bring it over here. The headlines I would put as center aligned. And then um, saying something that like sets you apart or saying like, an open-ended solution focused questions like this is going to sound so cheesy guys but it's just an example ready for your team to stop misbehaving again very probably super cheesy but just first thing that came to mind so these headlines are incredible to use to break up the sections um, again, with solution open-ended focus questions or something that sets you apart. Like one of my headlines says, um, one of the only life coaches offering sliding scale pricing, because that's something that really sets me apart. So like highlight the things that set you apart from your competition. And then you could always hit this duplicate button and then move this down to the next section. And you could add another one. And you don't have to have a headline after every section necessarily, um, but just having them sprinkled throughout is very helpful to highlight what sets you apart. And also it's a soft call to action. Like it gets them thinking like, oh yeah, my teen, if they stop misbehaving, like that'd be freaking great. <laughs> um, okay. And so I also put in some frequently asked questions. These are things that people are Googling about coaching. Um, and you don't have to do this until the bottom of the page, but I just wanted to do this up here because I realized some people don't know about coaching and then people can just click down. They can read the question, can click back up. 
and I'll show you very briefly how to make that. It's, it's pretty simple. We're gonna add a section, add a blank section. <clears throat> and then you're gonna add a block and you're gonna select accordion. And you could always make it bigger as well. And then you're just gonna click edit and then click into it and put in the question. Say, say people are Googling this exact phrase. This is so good to have on your website. And then you're just getting into it. Best tricks to weight loss are. And you'll get used to like SEO content writing. Like say this is the question, right? The best tricks to weight loss are. You're going to want to mention weight loss just as much as you can, like in a natural way, like not, not spammy, like not like every other word just as much as you can, but that's just an example of like a frequently asked question. Um, I believe, let's see. Hmm, never mind, they don't have that. Then you're always gonna hit save. Oh, I feel like I'm not gonna get through everything in 20 minutes, <laughs> but that's okay. Um, um, if you guys have any questions about anything, you can seriously just email me, sydney at resourcequeen.us. Like, I would be happy to answer questions you have. If you have like 10 questions you didn't get to, like, just send me them all in one email and I will just like answer them as much as I can. So I'll just show you briefly my website, doing more headlines, um, what you can bring to a session, talking about how I'm traveling. Um, more headlines. Donald Miller will go over all of this. This is the before and after, like the pain points and the benefits type thing. Another headline. What sets me apart? I did the accordion style on this like I did before. And then putting your buttons throughout a lot. The same buttons like book a console or book a chat or discovery call. You want to put tons of buttons on your website. And this is a little intro about me. And if you guys like are overwhelmed by this, like you can just use the layouts that Squarespace has and it will work just as well. More headlines, how to know if this is for you. I need to replace this stock image. I know better. I just got lazy. <laughs> Another headline, this is the part where you highlight social proof with some reviews. Another headline, this is the part where you mention the three-step process to get started with you. Um, so as you can see, this is very long. It's a very long landing page and it's summarizing everything you need to know about your business. <clears throat> and then at the bottom, I always recommend a one to three minute um, video and he'll go over this in the Marketing Made Simple book, but this is really nice to give people a taste of your energy and it's even better if it's answering a frequently asked question. If you just put like intro video, People might not be as inclined to watch that as they would be to like, what are the best tricks to weight loss? What does a life coach do? Like, what can a health coach help me with? Like, um, things like that. And if you have a YouTube channel, you could always just insert a little button to more videos. And then I showcase other offerings. It's not required. This is the blog summary section, um, which is really nice to have because if you have, you know, stuff around goals or coaching, um, it's just more opportunities for Google to see, you know, life coach goals. I haven't put many coaching blogs up yet because I'm still writing them. Um, but you could feature like four or eight or 12. Like, I mean, the more, the better. I wouldn't go more than 12. Um, but you could use that answer the public to get all kinds of questions and things like that. And this is a, an FAQ section where I put more questions that people were asking that I got from my SEO program. But again, you can use the answer to the public or even just your own intuition. Like, wonder what people are asking about or what do my clients come to me with? Like, they really just like don't know where to start with weight loss. Maybe like, how do I get started with weight loss, et cetera. And a real quick note on that. Um, let's say you're Googling your keyword. You can scroll down also and see this people also ask section on Google. These are also exact things people are Googling. What does a life coach do? 
How much do you pay a life coach? What is a life coach versus therapist? Do life coaches actually help? <laughs> LOL. <laughs> yes, they do. <laughs> but this is a really good place to see questions. You can Google anything. Um, mindset. People also ask, what is the mindset meaning? What are the seven types of mindsets? Three types, three kinds of mindsets, et cetera. And just pick ones that resonate. Um, so that's, that's a good part on some FAQs. And then just to show you the rest of the layout, I put a lot on there because I really was serious about the SEO. You could put a social piece on here too. And again, there's tons of YouTube videos on this stuff, how to add an Instagram feature to your Squarespace website. Like YouTube has everything. It's very, very easy to use. And again, there's, there's so many things to SEO. I'm just showing you like the very basic um, things about it. And then there's the footer. I wonder if I can move this. Oh, there we go. Okay. So that's kind of my basic layout um that I built and so long landing home page and there's a, there's a reason that everything is placed where it is um does anyone have questions about those things so far feel free to come on camera I can't usually see the chats so feel free to interrupt me Do you also have a book recommendation on how to write a blog? <laughs> <laughs> I don't, um, but this training is so helpful. Like, I'm so grateful for you. It, it, it feels less um, scary <laughs> or overwhelming. <laughs> so thank you. Good. Yeah, you're welcome. I'm glad you feel that way. Um, that's really, really good. This is, you guys can totally do this and you'll learn as, as you go and as you do it. Um, what I can do though, is I have a little e-guide on how to SEO optimize your blog posts. I'm going to pull it up right now and send you guys the Google drive link to it so that you can see it. Um, it gives you everything that you need for how to SEO optimize your blog. So I'm going to copy the link. I'm going to put it in the chat. It'll tell you um, how many times to list your keyword, how long to make your blog, um, and then how to basically like, you know, break things up, do bulleted lists, do numbers, do like how to blog posts, um, how many images to use. So I'm going to put this in the chat. Um, so that you guys can have it. Thank you. Yeah, totally. Let me know if that doesn't work. It, it should work. <laughs> Anyone should be able to access it with the link, but um, yeah, that will help you a ton with writing the blogs. Can you guys access that? It doesn't like make you ask for permission, right? Yep, I was able to open it. Okay, perfect. So yeah, there's that to explore for later. It <laughs> shows you guys are in here as, as animals. That's so <laughs> oh, Google is funny. Okay, so I'm just going to make sure we're on track. So we talked about the blog post feature. Let me show you real quick how to do that. I'm going to add a section. Add blank. This is how to add a blog post um, summary. And I would add it at the bottom of the page as well. I'm gonna hit add block. We're gonna hit summary. It's gonna pull just like a randomly built thing. We're gonna hit edit again. We're gonna select a page and it's gonna say blog. Here it says initiatives. This is their blog. So you're just going to click that and then I would make it, you know, as big as the page. And if I were you, I would put, um, under design, I would put four, eight or 12. 
Um, this one isn't going to do that though, because it looks like there's no more than four that they've used. And then that's how to make a quick blog summary and how to write the blogs. Um, you're just going to go to pages and let's see. Click add and then blog. The blogs are so easy. You're just going to choose a layout that you prefer. I like this one because it's nice and clean with the squares. And then you're just going to name maybe it's white matching blog or something fun. And then to get to it, you're just going to click pages and then live coaching blog. And you'll notice it's linked up here. If you want to move these order around, all you have to do is click and drag. And it becomes last. And you're just going to click into the life coaching blog, click on blog post one, click edit, and in the title. And then edit all this. And um, let's see, can you make that bigger? I guess you can't make it. Content width narrow. Okay. This is interesting. They updated Squarespace recently. So if you would like to make it larger, you can click edit and then hit narrow, medium, or wide. I really like the medium personally because when an eye sees a bunch of words, like our brain like doesn't really care for that. If it's stretched out wider, it's going to be easier to digest. Whereas if it's more narrow, it's going to be, you know, longer. Okay. And then, yeah, it'll automatically generate the next blog. You just hit save. Blogs are super easy to add and edit. Any questions so far about those things? So you have resources on yours and that has some subtitles. Yes. How do you like, is that just the page is the resources and then you have separate little pages underneath it? Or... Yeah, great question. So for that, you would create a new, um, instead of page, you would create a folder down here. And then you could name this folder like services, for example. And then what you're going to do underneath right here is add a page. And I'll just do this real quick for an example and say that it's life coaching. And to make this super easy, um, you can follow these layouts if you want to. Like I, I always adjust them depending on the pages, but you want to make all the internal pages look the same layout wise. So say you're like, I'm just going to use a, a template because it's easy. Um, you can go to settings next to this new page and you can scroll down and hit duplicate page, confirm, and say this one you want to talk about weight loss. Um, and then if for some reason it doesn't go under that folder, just click and drag it back up to the folder either before or after the other one. And now you have services, life coaching, weight loss. And then you can go in and edit this however you want to, like weight loss or something. And then, um, yeah, I would just make all these internal pages look the same as, as much as you can. Awesome, thank you. Yeah, totally. And if you want to add any other ones, like page layouts, like say you want like an about page, you could check out all these. There's a reviews page about page you could just have picture of you about like super simple and clean with some layouts um, or contact they have like contact pages they create for you and then you can go in here and click edit and you could just put like your name fill out your info adding social links is easy and if you want this contact form to go to you just click edit storage, and then email and select your email. We're not going to have time for the freebie giveaway, but I will 
in the email sign up, but I will make a short video for you guys about that. Um, let me double check. We are on track. Okay. And then two more things I want to go over real quick. Page edit. So when you're adding images, two things that are really important, the image alt text right here. Just gonna click image, edit, image alt text. You just describe what it is, literally, as if you're saying what this image is to a blind po person, windy road through hills. This makes your website accessible to the visually impaired and Google will freaking love you for it. It will massively help your SEO. The file name as well. You wanna put your keyword with dashes in between and your city. Life Coach Boise One, just like this, because URLs read this way as well with dashes. And if you're naming another image, you're going to do the same thing. Edit, image, alt text, people walking through the forest. Life Coach Boise Two. And you want to do that for all of your images. That's going to really help. Um, with the SEO. And then one last thing I'll show you real quick. So Sydney, like even for our branding photo shoots, like if there's a picture of me, like hanging a piece of a dress on a hanger, that's literally what I put in there. Like, mm -hmm. sort of like girl hanging clothes. Mm -hmm. That's perfect. Okay. Yeah. Like you're telling a blind person, like, this is what this image is of, which is exactly what Google does for you. Okay. That's perfect. And then the last thing real quick, I'll show you guys the meta title and meta description. And what that is, is say you're looking for a chiropractor. This is the meta title right here. And this is the meta description right here. These are so, so important. The meta, the both you want your keyword and your city. And how you do that is you just go to settings on your page we're going to go to seo and then site title it should have that already and then oh i'm so sorry this is the meta title the seo title is meta title so we would say life coach in Boise, idaho or maybe your mindset coach, mindset life coach in Boise, Idaho, whatever your title is, um, health coach in Denver, Colorado. And keep in mind, we only have 60 characters here. So you want to keep it really, really short. The meta, the meta description is something that's a little bit longer. Like this one is really short. You have 160 characters for this and you can get a character count um, Google Chrome extension on your computer, um, which you can use to, to put in the words to count the characters so that you know, because it's not just the words, it's the characters. So the, the SEO or meta title is 60 characters maximum and the SEO description, aka meta description is 160. And I just downloaded the, uh, like a character count Chrome extension in my computer or you could put it into a Google Doc and do character count that way. And so for the, the SEO description, I'll probably just show you mine. So say for my about page, I'm going to go settings, SEO. For this, you would want to put your name as well so that when people search your name, you're going to come up for this. And so this is about Sydney Sage. Life Coach in Boise. Super, super simple. And then this is just a brief description of the page. Learn about Sydney Sage, professional ICF trained life coach serving Boise and remotely. And then a nice call to action is nice at the end, like book a, book a free discovery call today. Book a free mini consult and coaching call. You have room to play here. And then for the homepage SEO, instead of going to pages and hitting settings and going to SEO this way, again, like your name, keyword, Boise, et cetera, 
The home page is under marketing down here. Then you're going to click SEO. And then same thing, the title, no more than 60 characters, your business name, your keyword, your city. And then here you could play around and put a little bit of your tagline, but also make sure you put life coach, your city. And then I put at the end, you know, free consultations, just a little soft call to action. There's just so many more things I want to show you guys, but I think we are almost out of time, but we talked about the meta title, 60 characters or less, your um, keyword and city, the meta description, keyword, city, maybe a little tagline, little call to action. We talked about the image SEO, the alt image text is just literally describing the image, like you're describing it to a blind person. And then the image name, your keyword and your city with dashes in between for all the images. And then we talked about the on-page SEO. Like I said, mentioning your keyword at least 30 times on every page. Um, the blog posts, I, I shared with you guys the, um, the e-guide on that. 1,047 words is like perfect. And the email sign up and the freebie giveaway, um, I'm going to make a short video for you guys and send it to Meg so that you have it. It's pretty easy. I just don't want to take more of your time. <laughs> Does anyone have questions about anything around this stuff? No, this was so helpful. Yeah, Good. Thank you so much. Yeah, totally. You guys are so Do we welcome. Know when I'll get the recording um, of this. Yeah. Well, you'll get the recording. I'm going to send that over to Max. Awesome. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. And if you guys have any questions, like I'll put my email in the chat. If you have, um, just try to send me them all at once though, instead of like multiple emails, but I would be happy to answer them. Um, if you need questions around anything, um, and if you want to get like super crazy into SEO, if you kind of like techie stuff, um, SEMrush is an incredible, um, higher priced, sophisticated SEO program that you could use like, you know, down the line or now um, to really like explode your SEO, but it gets very complicated and very in depth. But if you're like techie and into that, like there's that in case you want to check that out. Um, but yeah, thank you guys for having me and email me if you have questions. And it was really fun doing this. I've never done an SEO class before. I hope you loved it. And like, just don't be intimidated. You can Google anything, YouTube, anything. All of this is figure outable and learnable and you'll get better as you go. Thank you so much. Yeah, you're welcome. Welcome. I hope you guys have a great day. Let me know if you have questions. Thank you. Bye. Take care.